Welcome everyone. Today, we'll be taking a practical look at how to store data locally in your Flutter app with the help of an SQLite database. I'm going to demonstrate the basic CRUD, short for create, read, update, and delete operations in an SQLite database. Although we won't be utilizing the update operation in our app, if you're following the Skype clone series closely and haven't watched the previous video, I would suggest you to go and watch that first. If you are here just to see how SQLite works, welcome. And to everyone who are new, please consider subscribing. So let's get started. In the last video, we had created several files to structure our database implementation such that we are able to toggle between Hive and SQLite with just a minor change. And to do so, we had created a log interface and implemented its method on SQLite methods file and Hive methods file. Today, we'll be working mostly with SQLite methods file. Alright, so come inside of the SQLite methods file and I'm just gonna move this init method from bottom to the top of the file. Now, as you might already know that in SQLite database, we store data in the form of rows and columns inside a table, which in turn is present inside a database. Therefore, I'll start by writing database db. Then we need to store the database name. And for now, I'll just manually provide a name for our database. But eventually, we'll have to make it dynamic so that even the logs are user specific. We also need to store the table name. And this can be manually specified. So I'll just set it to call logs. Now let's start specifying the columns for our database. I'll start by writing columns in a comment. And then I'll write string id and set it to log underscore id. Now this part is crucial. And you need to make sure that these values are written exactly as we have specified them in our log.dart model. As we'll be mapping that log class. Oh. And if you're a new viewer, I would like to provide some context. Basically, you have landed on part 16 of an ongoing series of videos where I build a Skype clone in Flutter. The purpose of this video is to provide a way for us to store the call logs of any user in a local database. If you're interested in seeing the whole process of implementing chats, video call, authentication, and all that good stuff in Flutter, make sure to check out the Skype clone playlist on my channel. Alright, let's carry on. Now, you can simply create 6 more variables to store 6 more fields. One way to do this quickly and safely in VS Code is by making batch edits. First, I will create 6 more copies of this ID variable by simply holding the Alt plus Shift combo and pressing the down arrow 6 times. Now, we would want to start with changing the right hand side values. So, I'll head over to the log.dart file, put the cursor on the second line of toMap method just start for the double quote and hold Ctrl plus Alt and just press the down arrow precisely 6 times. Now that the cursor has covered everything, I'll release the Alt key and this time I'm going to use Ctrl plus Shift combo plus right arrow to select the whole word, then Ctrl C to copy it all. I'll come back to the SQLite methods file and do the same thing but after this single quote. And make sure to leave the first one alone, you don't want to mess with that just the 6 more values below it. Again, I'll leave the alt and with the help of the Control shift right arrow, select the whole world, then tap Control v There we go. But we still need to change the name of the variables. So I'll go over to the log.dart file, but this time I'll come inside of the second line of the from map constructor. Now just hold Control plus alt and tap the down arrow key 6 times. Then Control shift right arrow to select the whole world and Control c Now I'll come back and paste all that right over here. So if you've learned something new in just the opening minutes of the video, well then hit the subscribe button. Let's move on to this init method. First, I'll mark it as a sync, then I'll remove everything which it already has. Now every database is basically a file and we need to store that file somewhere. For that, I'll create a directory, dir and await to get the application documents directory. This method returns with a directory which is local to the application and it's not visible to the user. Then I'll create a variable of type string, name it path and set it to join function. Then we'll pass dir.path 
comma db name as parameters. You can easily see what the join method does by hovering over it. Basically, it just adds two or more parts together with a slash so that they become navigatable or accessible. Finally, I'll create a variable called db and set it to the result returned by the open database method. Now I'll pass several parameters to the open database method. First is the path of the database, then I'll also give it a version, and then I'll write onCreate, onCreate. This onCreate callback is triggered when the database is successfully created. Finally, I'll just return the DB. Now once the database has been created, we'll create a new table. So right over here, I'll define the onCreate method. It takes a database object and a version as parameter. Then I'll mark this function as async. Now here's where we'll define the create table query. So I'll write string create table query and set it to create table, pass the table name, then an open parenthesis, and within the open parenthesis, we'll define all the columns which our table is supposed to have. The first one will be ID. Now just after the column name, we define the type of data that this column will hold. In the case of ID, it will hold an integer value. And after the data type, we define various attributes for every column. For example, in this case, we want the ID column to be a primary key. As we want the value of this ID column to automatically increment itself by one. Then I'll write caller name, and this accepts a value of type text. Then caller pick, again text. Receiver name will be text as well. Receiver pick will be text. Call status, text, and timestamp, text. Let's execute this query with the help of the db.execute method. And I'll pass the create table query as a parameter. I'll await for this query to be executed. And once it does gets executed, I'll print table created. Before we move on to the add logs method, we need to initialize the database which we created earlier. And we also need to define a way to retrieve the initialized database. We'll do so with the help of a getter. So just over here, I'll write future of type database get db and set it to async. This tells us that this getter is going to get us with a database value if we await for it. I would suggest you to follow a similar naming convention which I am following. You can see that I have kept the name of the database variable as underscore db as it is private to our class and the name of our getter is db as well, but without an underscore. Now I'll check if the db is null. If it's not, then we don't really need to do anything and we'll just return the underscore db variable. But if it is null, then I'll write underscore db equals await in it. So we await for the database to be created and then we initialize the underscore db variable with the help of this init method. And once the underscore db variable is initialized, we simply return it back. Now let's make changes to the add logs method. So I'll remove everything which it already has, mark the function as a sync, then we'll need to wait for the database. So I'll write var db client and set it to await db. Now this is the same db getter which returns us with a database and if the database is not initialized, then it creates the database and then returns it to us. Now there are two ways in which you can work with SQLite database in Flutter. Either you could execute raw SQL query like the one we just did while creating the table inside the onCreate method. So for example, in order to insert something, you would write insert into and specify the table name, then specify the columns and values. Or the other way is to use the SQL helpers. We'll be doing everything with the help of the SQL helpers. And you can almost always get the work done with these helpers. So I'll write await dbclient.insert, pass in the table name and pass log.toMap log. This will automatically map the log object and insert the data in our database. Now, after insertion, let's talk about reading the data from the database. So I'll come inside of the getLogs method and I'll mark it as a sync. Then I'll start by introducing a try catch block. And if we catch an error, then we'll print it and return null. Again, I will await for the db getter to get us the database and assign it to db client variable. Now the result which is fetched from a read query basically returns with a list of map. So I'll create a variable of type list map and name it maps. And if you were doing this with the help of the raw query, you would simply write await dbclient.rawquery and pass in the query, which would be select asterisk from table name. 
In order to do the same thing with the help of SQLite helpers, we'll write dbclient.query, pass in the table name, and just pass the columns in the form of a list. For now, I'm going to comment out this statement as we are only working with SQLite helpers in this tutorial. Now our next step would be to create a list of type log, extract out a log class from each of these maps, and add those log classes to the log list, and finally return the log list. So I'll start by checking that the map list is not empty. Then I'll employ a for loop which scans through the map list and keeps track of every map object that it finds, and it adds them to the log list variable. Now remember, log list is a list of logs. So before adding any of these elements into our list, we'll need to map it into a log object. We can do that with the help of the from map constructor. Finally, I'll just return the log list. It's time to define the delete logs method. Now, delete logs takes an ID of the log which is to be deleted. I've marked this function as asynchronous as well. Now, as always, we await for the DB and set the return result to DB client. After that, I'll write return await dbclient.delete, pass the table name, and if we were working with the raw SQL queries, we would have written a delete query which goes like delete from table where id equal log id. But here that where clause is provided by passing the value to the where named parameter. Take a look at this documentation. Where is the optional where clause to apply when updating a record. And passing null values will update all the rows. So if we pass null, it would have automatically deleted everything from the table. And the next line says you may include question marks in the where clause which will be replaced by the values from where args or where arguments. So here's how it works. I'll write where and pass $ID equal question mark inside of single quotes as an argument. This way the function knows that whatever you pass in the where args parameter will have to be replaced with that question mark. So in the where args parameter, which is short for where arguments, I'll pass a list with just a single value, which is log id. And if you're wondering what this method will return if you await for it, well, it will return the number of rows affected. In this case, the number of rows which can be affected by this operation is just going to be one, since every single log id is unique. We saw how to insert, fetch, and delete data from database. And we'll actually do all that soon. But how do we update or override a record? Well, updation will be a combination of delete as well as insert method in terms of how they were implemented. Since we are required to pass the data which any record is supposed to be updated to, and we also need to pass a where parameter, just like the delete method. Now, we won't be making use of this update method anywhere in the app. I'll quickly create update logs and pass in a log object. Then mark it as a sync. And inside its definition, I'll write var db client and set it to await db. After that, I'll simply write await db client dot update. Then I'll pass in the table name and the data with which we wish to replace the previous one. After that, we need to specify which record should be affected by this. And we do that with the help of the where named parameter. So just like the delete method, I'll write dollar id equal question mark. Then for where args, I'll pass in a list and set it to log.logid. Alright, so that's all there is to it. Now since we have opened the database, therefore it's a good practice to close it as well. You don't always need to do it, at least in the case of SQLite you don't really need to do it, because the SQLite dependency handles that case for you. So as soon as the application is out of the view or removed, the SQLite DB is also closed. But let's just see how we can do it manually if we ever wish to. First, mark the close function as a sync, then create a db client which awaits for db, and finally call db client.close. Alright, so that's about it for this video. So far, we have just defined these methods, but we have not utilized them in the UI, and we'll do that soon. This video was all about the definition and implementation of the SQLite DB so that I could explain the basic CRUD operations of SQLite without taking much of your time. In the next one, we'll be doing the same thing for Hive database as well. And the video after that will actually deal with calling these methods that we have just defined. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Don't forget to leave a like and yeah, if you're new, please subscribe to the channel.